to everybody, also those out in the overflow. Um, good to have here presidents and coaches and captains of the United Bright Football and Netball Club. Apologies uh, from John Atkins, who's on your sponsorship committee. He's in Canada. And also from Graham Wells, who's often seen yelling from the boundary line on a Saturday afternoon, also unable to be here today. <coughs> today we want to acknowledge the sports chaplaincy of Graham Mansa at the Bright Football and Netball Club. It's something as a church that we value very highly, the opportunity of being a partner with the Football and Netball Club here in Bright and supporting Graham as he supports the club. Of course, we're also, the, the partnership goes further because we're also a sponsor of the club and that gets us that sign on the boundary line fence. So it's great to have you all here. Um, please relax and thanks for being part of our worship service and this acknowledgement today. I'd like to invite Graham to come up and uh, he's going to uh, fill in a lot of the gaps about what his chaplaincy means, but we're going to pray for him acknowledging that chaplaincy now. He's very shy. <laughs> you must have to drag him up. <laughs> So I think everyone from the Football and Netball Club and just about everybody else in the Bright community know Graham. And Graham is a man of wisdom and compassion and a heart for people. And he's perfect for this particular responsibility. Well, he's not perfect. He's close. <laughs> but he's, he's a perfect fit. We know he's a perfect fit for this responsibility and opportunity that he has. So we're going to pray for him now and then uh, Graham will respond. Um, we'll have Glenn, Graham's son, come up um, to join us in this prayer. And Ted, uh, who's probably known Graham for just about the longest around here. And Josh, come up too. And we'll just... Uh, we do this to some solidarity in support of Graham's role, which wouldn't surprise you to know that it's not always easy because he's involving him, himself in other people's lives and available uh, to hear their stories and sometimes these go home with him and uh, he uh, has to mull over and, and come back another day with some helpful responses. So let's pray for Graham now. Loving God, our Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for Graham. We thank you for who he is, who he is becoming, how you are working in his life. We thank you for who he is, for his faith and his availability to help others, for the guidance and wisdom that he brings here in this fellowship at Bright Church of Christ, then into the broader community and particularly into the Bright Football and Netball Club. So we just thank you for what you have put with, within him to help others. We thank you for his faith, for his wisdom, and for his patience and for his compassion. And now, as we've done in the past, we continue to do, pray a blessing upon his role, that he will be able to rely on you at all times. We thank you that you're always there for him. And we pray that, you'll, that he'll be able to hear your still small voice, so that when he needs wisdom that can only come from you, to impart to others, in support of others, we pray that he might feel your guidance, hear your word in his life and be able to share that. So thank you, Lord, for Graham. We pray a blessing upon him. We thank you for Janice, too, who supports him and for the other members of the family who sometimes have to release him to be, instead of being with them, being with others. So we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for the club, United Bright Football and Netball Club, that Graham can serve in. And we look forward to this partnership, partnership continuing many years ahead. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Did Warren say perfect? <coughs> Did Janice hear that? <laughs> Just she checking. Knows. She knows. Just making sure. 
<laughs> you know, yeah. I don't think I'll get too carried away because um, I'm far from perfect. What a fantastic morning. You know, I, I just want to offer a warm welcome to all our visitors and I guess in particular to the um, reps from the Bright Netball Football Club. Fantastic. And I'm, I'm really touched um, having so many reps here. I know there was a number that, and there always is, that weren't able to be here, but, um, but really, I'm really touched that you're able to come. It's actually my privilege to serve as the sport chaplain with the United Bright Football Netball Club. I, I do cherish my involvement and, and I'm blessed by the encouragement of many and by the support of the club and the pastoral support and oversight from my church here. Yeah, I'm particularly touched. And yes, I am a bit emotional that we, the fellowship here in the football club, can share in our service this morning. Of course, emotion is a word we share, just like passion, character, community, family, service, support, relationships, friendships and commitment. My Christian journey started when I was young. My first real commitment was made in my teenage years at a Wandilagong youth camp. And then my journey has continued on a road that's not always been straight, not always flat, sometimes filled with sunshine and other times with dark clouds. Sometimes standing still, sometimes filled with sunshine and other times with clouds, dark clouds as I said. Other times walking and then other times running, being challenged, striving, far from perfect, learning, needing to seek God's presence, his guidance and his strength. But always with an emphasis on relationship and not religion. And yes, being reminded to give thanks for life for family, friendships, the gift of grace, love and forgiveness. Dare we dream to make the community in which we live a better place? Dare we dream to build character? Dare we dream to make a difference in the things that really matter? Dare we dream to change lives? Are we reaching for the impossible? dare to believe, to be better people, to complement and support each other, to acknowledge our different gifts and abilities, encourage each other, work for a common good. My prayer is that our dreams become reality. My prayer is the church, we the church, can also be part of our community, bringing our Christian faith in a way that is positive, relevant and active. I wish the Uniting Bright Football Netball Club every success, not just on the sporting field and court, but on building strong foundational character off the sporting field. This year, there is some exciting excitement in the air and it's not just the new police station being built down the road but the new community, sporting and club facility under construction at Pioneer Park. And then next door to this building is our new worship centre. But let's always be mindful, be reminded that the key to success is in people, not in a building. The Uniting Bright Football Net Club has a purpose to help develop well-rounded young people through a positive environment which teaches humility, integrity and reward through effort and fair play at all times. The church has a vision and a purpose to allow Christ to transform us together so that his character, ministry and mission are expressed through all of us. Together, our purpose, our vision is more than just words. It involves all of us to contribute with the resources, abilities and gifts we have. A well-balanced community, physically, emotionally and spiritually. The potential is in our hands. 
We can change our communities. Life is challenging. Life can be changing. Would you join with me as we pray together? Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning. The opportunity and freedom we have to worship together and to share with community. I pray for each person, for all the different abilities and gifts and contributions and opportunities together we hold. Create in us a combined desire to make each other and this community greater. To see the needs of others more important than our own. To exhibit love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control as your inspired word brings. Challenge us. Challenge our leaders to make the most of every day with all we have and be open to receive godly wisdom, to ask the right questions and discernment to hear the right answers, to be the best we can. (coughs) Heavenly Father, when we are tempted to feel that life is a mess, is too difficult, is confusing, or we are too busy to line up with what is right, forgive us, Lord. Remind us, Lord, that our attitude matters and that our hope for you is in, the, is in you. We pause for a moment to be still and to prayerfully consider all those we know and you know that are in need. Health concerns for relational or difficult situations, for all those who are suffering depression, or addiction in its various forms, those that suffer from loneliness or disappointment, and for all who are subject to persecution or so many suffering over tragic situations and those other circumstances that come to mind. We reach out in Jesus' name with love and care and with practical assistance when able. And we pray that whatever is our our situation, that we can find joy, strength, courage and wisdom in dealing with the circumstances or the situation. Give us the insight to hear and understand your word, to be a lifeline in a world needing to hear good news. Gracious Lord, as we now come to share in communion may we be reminded of the price you paid. Be inspired by the love of Christ, whose death on a cross, whose grace, whose mercy, forgiveness and love can set us free. May we come with humility, open to the fantastic and life-changing possibilities that knowing you brings. Amen. Uh, firstly, um, I, I'm a little bit more uh, organised to uh, today to what I was um, two weeks ago. I said, oh, yeah, I'll be, uh, I can go down there, go to the MCG, have a lovely little dinner with our table, um, just appreciate the sports chap- chaplaincy uh, night, and that'll be really good. So we've walked in there, I've come to the table, uh, number two, which is right off the main thing, uh, right, main area. Uh, this lady's come up and said, oh, you'll, you'll be, I'll ask you to come up here in 10 minutes. And I've gone, well, <laughs> 10 minutes? Yep, that you're, you're down to the last three. And I've gone, right. <laughs> Graham didn't tell me that. <laughs> Graham didn't tell me a lot of things. But um, it was a great night. Um, I, we were nominated, and I think it's all for the club and uh, for Graham which uh, we're probably pretty privileged to have um, a sports chaplain in our football club, netball club. Um, we, in North East Victoria, there's probably none around, and um, we're very privileged to have someone like Graeme around that uh, helps us out, does a lot of things if, with the community, just to better the whole community. But uh, we're very lucky. Thanks, Graeme. Um, 
and he told me today that I had two minutes to, ha to have a speech. I think he went about 12 and a half, but, um, <laughs> so I think he's diddled me again. But it was a great night, like he said, uh, we had Justin Langer, we had um, uh, three uh, Commonwealth Games representatives there, there was St Kilda footballers there as well, and there was 450. So when I was nominated, I went up and I'd won. Uh, I think it was the first time Janice said I was speechless. <laughs> I just looked around and go, wow, 450 cameras, TVs everywhere. And well, what do I do here? But lucky, when this lady came up and mentioned it to me, I jotted my name down and I jotted four points down. And the four points was uh, having a chaplain, as, as we did in Graham, um, was what we try to do for the community uh, with our football netball club. We've got um, senior footballers, uh, from, and junior footballers from under 12s, 14s, 19s, seconds and seniors. We have Auskick, which is really junior, junior um, um, footballers. Then in our netball side, we've got under 15, which was very successful last year, right through to seniors. And then we've got net, set and go, which is another, uh, like a junior netball. All up, we've probably got about 250 involved in our club, and it's great to see when... You watch young kids that are uh, net set and go and eyes kick and they come through to be these young blokes and young ladies down there and they've got somewhere in life and you feel really um, you're great to, to be involved in their life and to help them through. Um, I was just nominated, I think, um, I was nominated because I, of the club, what we do around the club and what we try and help. And Graham's been around numerous times to sick people that him and myself have talked talk to and, and we've gone around and that's why we're so lucky. There's only 450 chaplains within Australia, 400, uh, 449 of them are absolutely sports nuts like Graham himself, loves his, uh, loves his football, loves his sport and that's why they, they're involved in that because they love their sports. Um, there's another 4,000 odd people that want to be chaplains around Australia which is tremendous which they will eventually come through. So it just spe it speaks highly of how um, it's sports chaplains are coming right through all sporting um, identities around, like rugby league, soccer, football, and they'll eventually come to the um, to the country clubs. Um, just on our our club, uh, we've got all our sides. We're probably middle of the range at the moment. Um, uh, we had a bit of a loss yesterday with our senior clubs, but you know that's all part. That's all part of our football netball. It's you, it's another day. We're still alive. We've got next week, and we go from there because I'm a Collingwood supporter, so you can win some and you can lose some. <laughs> so we've still got we've got a great club. Uh, we embrace that club. We've got a great uh, facilities as um, Graham talked about before that's coming through, so if you're ever driving through uh, Pioneer Park, just have a look at it. And uh, in the near future, hopefully about um, the end of July, we'll, we'll eventually go in there, and then we'll be able to have our uh, Church of Christ breakfast in there, which will be a great, it's a great breakfast and a great morning. I'd like to thank um, Church of Christ, uh, Graham Warren, um, and everyone for uh, having us here this morning, and um, thanks very much. Last week here we looked at the idea of freedom, particularly spiritual freedom, from the earlier verses in Galatians chapter 5. This is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the various churches in the region of Galatia during the first century of the Christian church. This particular chapter concludes with nine virtues that have become known collectively as the fruit of the Spirit. Whereas it's possible to exhibit these in a natural way, their potential is maximised through the presence of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is that part of God that continues to bring the life of Jesus to this world. Good fruit demonstrates a healthy tree. Good character demonstrates a healthy life. This is a simple metaphor. A good quality tree producing good tasting fruit has likely been well watered and maintained appropriately. We could equally see these nine listed attributes as good community values. We might easily agree that communities are better places when these attitudes are present. 
love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Certainly churches are better when we experience these character traits as opposed to far more negative alternatives. We in the church need to keep clearly focused on these areas. When it comes to sporting clubs, a fierce competitiveness on the field or on the court might mean we put a high priority on playing aggressively within the rules to gain a victory over another team. Yet when we think about our club itself internally, as a group of people engaging socially with one another, these listed values would definitely seem to be appropriate. They sort of speak for themselves. They are obviously broadly beneficial in all our social relationships. So whether in church, club or community, let's think of our impact on others. These words give practical application to the idea of loving one's neighbour. For all these words are relational words. They describe how we interact with others. And they are good reminders because we can so easily break relationship by preferring our own agenda to the detriment of others or by being selfish. For example, on the negative side, as described in verse 26 at the tail end of that reading, there are relationship breakers like conceit or arrogance or pushing others down so we look better. We can compete for our position in the team or at work, but only through our own capacities and talents, not through putting others down. Sometimes we need to feel, sometimes we feel we need to push ourselves up because others look just so darn good. That's called envy. But each of us is unique, born with particular talents, potential and value, destined to be a great team contributor. Yet sometimes we are so busy looking around at what others are doing, we miss our own opportunities for our own moment to shine. We shouldn't need to compare ourselves with others. We shouldn't want to be like them. Rather, we should strive to be the the best version of ourselves. We should discover for ourselves what we are good at and pursue that. You may just find it there, within yourselves, to be the best you can be. And that's how you best help the team. For Christians, they normally take their lead from Jesus, who showed himself to be the best team player of all, especially when it came to taking one for the team. Jesus was the epitome of self-sacrifice. Jesus is the only one worth comparing ourselves to. And when we fall short of his greatness, we can access his forgiveness. Christians also rely on the Holy Spirit to help them nurture and develop the qualities that are listed here. Especially when certain life challenges around illness, trauma and loss make things more difficult. For all of us, this list challenges how we do life and how we live in our environment. Love is the first on the list. And for those who watched the recent royal wedding and heard the sermon there, we heard a lot about the power of love. We were created in love and for love and for love. This is where we acknowledge that we are part of a broad and diverse human community where we need to be prepared to treat others as we would like to be treated ourselves and where we are prepared to forgive people when they do wrong by us for the sake of their future and our future. Yet often, due to the complexity of life, this can go very wrong. For an example, in the film, Planes, Trains and Automobiles, Neil, played by Steve Martin, was trying to get home for Thanksgiving with his family. Through a series of misadventures, mainly caused by snow and adverse weather, Neil found himself travelling with Dell, played by John Candy. Dell had continually frustrated Neil by stealing his taxi, talking incessantly, spilling beer everywhere, etc. Their very different personalities keep clashing. When they were forced to share a motel room, it all spilled out of Neil. You know, everything is not an anecdote. You have to discriminate. You choose things that are, that are funny or, or mildly amusing or interesting. You're a miracle. Your stories have none of that. They're not even amusing accidentally. 
Honey, I'd, li- I'd like you to meet Del Griffith. He's got some amusing anecdotes for you. Oh, and here's a gun so you can blow your brains out. You'll thank me for it. <sighs> I-, I-, I could tolerate any-, any insurance seminar. For days, I could sit there and listen to them go on and on with a big smile on my face. They'd say, how can you stand it? And I'd say, because I've been with Del Griffith. I can take anything. You know what they'd say? They'd say, I know what you mean. The shower curtain ring guy. Whoa. It's, it's like going on a date with a chatty Kathy doll. I expect you to have a little string on your chest, you know, that I pull out and have to snap back. Except I wouldn't pull it out and snap it back. You would. Ah, 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 ah. And by the way, you know, when you're, when you're telling these little stories, here's a good idea. Have a point. It makes it so much more interesting for the listener. The hurt and emotion in Dell, played by John Candy there, reflects how hurtful sometimes human communication can be. We need to be prepared to treat others as we would like to be treated ourselves. Many of the ideals that follow love on this list flesh out what it means to live in love and counteract the sort of attitude that we saw displayed by Neil, played by Steve Martin in that clip. I'm skipping past joy for the moment and going to peace. This is to avoid hostility. This is to keep the lines of communication open with all our friends and those we associate with. Where relationships have already broken down, the bearer bearer of peace will seek and aid reconciliation wherever possible. Good character is seen in the one who is the peacemaker, bringing harmony in the home and in the neighbourhood. Then there's patience. This is required when other people don't learn, improve, perform or behave the way we think they should. Yet we are all works in progress. We all have pressing issues in our life. We all have certain weaknesses. We have different personalities and backgrounds. Sometimes we are more patient with ourselves than we are willing to be with others. Sometimes we see our own faults in others and overstep in our judgment or criticism of them. We need to consider what others might be going through and offer them due consideration. This is patience. It could be using some empathy, that we can come alongside them and give them a hand. Then there's kindness. This is stepping outside the normal, to do something special for somebody, going the extra mile to make someone's day. This is the act of the Good Samaritan who crosses the road to help the one that other people were ignoring. Then there's generosity. This is digging deeper and giving away something of ourselves that will mean a lot to someone else. It may even change their life. There is here an understanding of the neglect that some people live in, or the tragedies of of life that can so easily mean impoverishment. Generosity means a sharing of our lives and our various resources. Rather than being protective of what we have, we share it. This includes the networks and friendships that we have found helpful ourselves. Sometimes the most generous thing we can give is a word of encouragement. This comes from our best place. Then there's faithfulness. This is about loyalty, reliability and honesty, being trustworthy and faithful to whoever we have committed ourselves to. In relationships, family, church, community, workplace and club. This is about being responsible and seeing through our commitments. If we say we're going to do something and the reason for doing so remains right, then we should fulfil this commitment. We no longer allow ourselves to be self-indulgent, but rather seek to consider the feelings of the others around us. In a society where people tend to decide at any given moment what suits them best, the idea of faithfulness may be the hardest one on the list, but one our society certainly needs to see more of. Then there's gentleness. This is not about being soft, far from it. It is actually one of the greatest qualities of all, controlled strength. 
to be able to express our strength of mind and heart in the most helpful of ways, in the course of all our dealings with others. This is about summoning all we have learnt in life's journey and expressing this to another in a way that they can learn and grow. We could call this humility. Gentleness overrides the critical spirit. We don't hold power and control over anyone, but rather empower others, releasing them to be the best they can be. And we become teachable and coachable ourselves, having an ear open to that word of truth that might be hard to hear, for there, for there is always something new we can learn and apply. And then self-control. This is to reject the notion of anything goes. Here we focus on doing those things that work well and work for good for us and others. At the same time as avoiding those things that generally cause harm. This is the discipline of not letting anything awkward or dark or dangerous that is happening inside of us to affect badly anyone else. Exercising self-control means that we won't abuse anyone else in any way. When anger builds within us, this can be a struggle, but we know well in this day and age that rather than striking out, we need to exercise restraint, and we need to find someone to talk to, like a sports chaplain, for instance, or a good pastor. We often need to gain some new perspective, and we often need to gain some helpful tools through which to handle certain situations better. Close to the end of his long journey home, Neil, played by Steve Martin, has time to reflect on his time spent with Dell and works out that things may not have been as he once thought. Just returning now to joy. Joy is more than just occasional bouts of happiness. This is a completely positive attitude to life that is able to endure hardships seeing the deeper meanings in life's experiences, where there is a genuine pleasure in the success of others and where we can openly celebrate with those who are celebrating. The possibility of joy will be destroyed if we keep comparing what we have with what others have. I know this every time I see that great-looking Winnebago or motorhome driving past me. Joy is produced when we can be content with our lot and can be pleased for others in what they have. Life offers us the opportunity to rise to the best levels of human character. We can settle for less, which may unfortunately mean we have a tendency to hurt and hinder more than help and encourage. But at the same time, we shouldn't get down on ourselves too much, for we are all works in progress. Hopefully, whatever team you're in, that team can help you be the best person you have the potential to be. And may God bless you in all your endeavours. Amen.